In your book, One Nation, you write movingly of the respect that your mother and other members of the African-American community in Detroit while you were growing up had for education. We can confirm that this was a common attitude among poor white folks as well, at least up until the 1960s. What happened? Why, generally speaking, is that respect for education no longer there among poor people, black or white? And what can we do to restore it? Yeah, well, one of the things that, that really began to happen in a big way in the 60s that hadn't been going on before is that we began to really idolize sports stars and entertainers, lifestyles of the rich and famous. <laughs> and, uh, and those things became much more important to us than, than the scientist and the doctor and, and the professor and the people who, you know, utilize intellect in order to achieve things. And this is not to say that no one in sports or entertainment is intellectual, but that's not the aspect of their lives that right. is emphasized. And uh, consequently, you know, you've got so many of these young boys running around, for instance, in the inner city thinking that they're going to be the next Michael Jordan or, you know, the next Michael Jackson or somebody. And, uh, I mean, if, if you can do that, and people are paying you millions and millions of dollars, why do I need to bother with algebra, mm -hmm. grammar, all this stuff? I don't need to do that. I'm gonna, I, can, I can buy and sell any school that I want. But what they don't realize is only seven in one million will make it as a starter in the NBA. One in 10,000 will have a successful career in entertainment. So your odds are not very good. Less than 1% of people who go to college on an athletic scholarship end up playing professional sports. And if you do end up playing, your average career span is three and a half years. So we need to reorient people in terms of what real success is all about.